For more than 40 years, Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa has conducted research in medicinal chemistry at the University of Minnesota Health Science Complex and the Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Minneapolis. He has had more than 165 articles peer-reviewed and published, primarily funded by grants from the National Institutes of Health and the Veterans Administration. He has served as senior scientist at the Veterans Administration, an adjunct professor for the Center of Drug Design at the University of Minnesota, and a professor emeritus of medicinal chemistry and toxicology at the University of Minnesota. And for 32 years, he has been the senior editor of the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry. Dr. Nagasawa has long been regarded as one of the world's leading research scientists on cellular function, glutathione, and the chemistry and delivery of glutathione. He and his laboratory have been awarded nine, nine extraordinary patents. Glutathione levels are severely depleted in chronic alcoholics, and this is when it all started. What we were trying to do was to develop something that will enhance glutathione levels in veterans who were chronically alcoholic, and they were returning from the Vietnam War. We had an avalanche of chronic drug addicts and chronic alcoholics that came after the Vietnam War, and the VA hospital was full of these. They were patients that were, had alcoholic liver disease as well as alcoholic cirrhosis. So it's a very important thing for us to try to develop something to protect these chronic alcoholic veterans patients that came home from Vietnam, to try to raise their glutathione in order to be able to pr protect them from progressing from, uh, from uh, what initially what happens is that you have fatty liver, fatty liver as a result of alcohol, and if you continue to drink, you'll, you would have pr progressively alcoholic liver, disease, alcoholic liver disease and finally alcoholic liver cirrhosis, which is terminal unless you can have a uh, liver transplant. We had to have many twists and turns, trials and tribulations, and at one stage, we even have to do a 180-degree flip in our thinking process to understand what was going on experimentally. However, and this required a completely open mind. You take what the data said, what the experiment said, and keep an open mind and try to interpret what had happened. And so we continued to develop it on the basis of what the experiments are telling us. And bear in mind Thomas Edison's quote here, failure was not an option for us. It was not, we will, we will not fail. So we persevered. <laughs> we persevered and did those experiments that finally led to ribosome. And this was a eureka moment for me, very, very profound. It is very satisfying to know that ribocene, as a dietary supplement, can be taken by anyone, especially because you do not need a prescription for it. This means that everyone can take it. <laughs>